calculation. Freak, a frequent need within these models is to calculate statistics that apply across the population, summarizing the count of individuals who fall into this category or that category, or this characteristic or that one, or have the average value of this characteristic across this population or subpopulations, et cetera. And it turns out that EduLogic provides, although that can always be done, like any of this stuff with custom JavaScript, EduLogic provides, as it does for many areas, ways of, of greatly easing that process. And it defines something called a statistic, okay? Which you can define, it, and a statistic is defined over a over a population, over a, um, a collection of people. Um, and um, it has built in support for a variety of, of types of information. It could be a TV calculus, an actual value, the minimum value, the average value, and the sum over a population. Okay? And uh, statistics can then be defined as, as properties of the population. Okay? Um, now, um, in this particular case, um, we have a, um, a very simple um, model that, that has um, a very simple characteristics for the person in it. And they're, they're in the state chart only. What I'd like to do, partly as a refresher and partly to sort of uh, ease you into this process, is I'd like you to drag, go open person, okay? And I'd like you to drag in a parameter, okay? And, and that parameter will be, um, say, their income, okay? Um, and then I'd like you to drag in another parameter, which will be their sex. We saw this before, right? Now, sex, we're going to encode as an integer. And income, we're going to encode as a double, okay? So income, double sex, integer. We don't have to do this, but it's going to help you see statistics a little bit more clearly before I do something that's a little bit more complex, OK? Um, so income and sex. Now, now we have a population that's heterogeneous, not only in terms of their location and their, their um, state in which they're, they're, they're in, their health state, but in terms of their income and sex. Where do we specify? for a given person, the values of these parameters. Where is that specified? Who can tell me? We saw it before. That's a good reminder. What's that? Mm. Well, um, it would be if those are parameters of main, because the experiment creates main. And in general, if you have, if you have parameters for a given object, main, the thing that's best, for example, um, the thing that specifies those are the things that create it. An experiment creates a mean, okay? Um, brings it into existence, brings this whole world into existence. For a person, who creates a person? Yeah, yeah, it's in Maine. And Maine is responsible in, the, in that population to create it. So we look to that population, people. Okay, so double click on Maine. And now I'd like you to. Um, uh, to go click on people, okay? And you'll notice that now there's a um, sort of fields here for income and population, okay? The best place to do it, I'd like to put it in, in the parameters uh, tab. I believe those are completely equivalent. But, um, you know, we could do, uh, maybe we'll do a log normal, um, a log normal with, um, uh, what are the different, um, the di different options here. Okay, mu. Um, so maybe we'll do, you know, four, and then um, and then we have a, 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 a log standard deviation. Maybe it will be um, maybe it'll be four also, and then we have a minimum which will be zero. Okay, so that's a log normal distribution which we haven't seen before, and then we'll have a sex which will be random true. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Um, it'll be uniform. Uh, uniform discrete, uh, and we're drawing, drawing a value between 0 and 1, um, a discrete value, it's either 0 or it's 1, okay? We, we saw something similar before when we made a heterogeneous population. Question? Okay, so, so if you start typing it and you do control space, that is your friend. That 
is your friend. It, it, it's, a, it's a trusted friend. Um, it's at a, at a certain point, um, if you work with us enough, um, you know, it's possible, it's, it's possible someone may reasonably get jealous it's not only a friend, it's your spouse. Um, <laughs> it's, it's really that close of a, of a friend. Um, and uh, so, so here what we have is, is log normal, 4, 4, 0, and uniform discrete, 0 and 1. Okay, um, so what does this mean? What does this mean that we have this in here? This is a draw from the distribution. So when it's creating people, what's going to be happening? Are they all going to have the same value? It's a draw from this exact identical value? No, what's going to happen is for each person, it's going to draw. It's going to be running this expression to draw that person's initial value. Right? Okay, so... Um, and you'll notice, by the way, there are these little, there are these little things here which say you can, you can actually have this thing vary by the index of the person. So you could give everyone in the latter half of the population a higher income and, and so on if you wanted to. But we're not doing that. This is just a review of, of heterogeneity. And, and um, if we run the model, um, if we run the model here, uh, what we'll see now is that if we go down to people, we'll see that... Um, uh, well, okay, so, so some people probably chose the, uh, the parameters of that. Um, uh, th those would be in thousands. Um, and, uh, and you can see there's a really a large heterogeneous um, um, collection of different incomes there. Um, different people have uh, different sexes, so, so sex 0, 1, 1, 1, okay, 0, 0, um, et cetera. Okay, so we have a heterogeneous population. Great. Now let's do some statistics over it. How many men do we have? How many men and how many women? Let's go do that. Question. Quick question. So, uh, is he uniform zero one? I'm sorry. I used uniform underbar D I S C. Um, and why did I do that? Can anyone tell me? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a discrete uniform distribution. Um, uh, it, and so it, it returns uh, a value that's um, one of discrete quantities. It's integers, you know, zero or one. Um, if it were, you know, discrete, if zero to ten, it would be zero or one or two or three. So in other words, it's a, prob it's a draw from probably mass function, not a probability density function. Right? Um, yeah. I just wanted to point out that Jeff Great. And I should note that any logic has, I, I really appreciate that, um, very important. Um, so, so the any logic help, um, great resources there, um, in addition to online um, with the emerging big book of any logic. Um, uh, there's also some great tutorials up there um, for building up, uh, building up models and so on that, that I'd encourage you to, to go check out. Um, so uh, appreciate that. Um, so, uh, so an anyone need TA help or have any questions about that? Okay. So we have this heterogeneous population. Let's go compute the number of people who are the number of women and the number of men. So go to the, the population and go to statistics. And you'll see right now there ain't much there. And you can do add statistics here. And we're going to say count males. Okay. And uh, you'll notice we have a type which we can choose. This is not a type in a Java sense. This is what sort of statistic is it? What kind of statistic is it? Um, is this a count of things? Is it a sum? Is it an average? Is it min or max? And all of these are over the entire population. Is it a count that, that meets some criteria? And you'll notice that, again, we can, we can refer to, with this little, um, little light bulb, we can refer to the embedded object using item. So we can count the number that are male. 
let's suppose that males uh, are encoded so that uh, zero means male and one means female. Okay. Um, here we had item dot sex equals zero. Okay. So count males. Okay. Um, and we could do model uh, build, and it's a happy camper. So that's model build. Okay. Um, so that would be the count of males. Let's do a count of females. Count females. Now, what does this double equals mean? It's a condition. It's testing whether item sex equals zero. If we just had a single one, it would be assigning two item sex, which is not what we want. We want Um, maybe we could do, you know, um, uh, below count uh, in poverty or something like that, and we could have we could have um, item dot income. Item is referring here to the to the um, person at hand. Uh, T A T A. So item dot income, and maybe the so we express that in thousands. So um, uh, maybe this would be item dot income below. What is the what is the, the poverty line right now? I can't can't remember. Sorry. What is it? Okay, so if it's less than eighteen, um, uh, let me count it as being in poverty. Um, and. Let's suppose we wanted um, count count women in poverty. Count count women in poverty. How do we how do we do that? Um, does anyone want to suggest? String the two together and have an and. Okay, so. Item dot sex equals one, so so it's 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 a woman, and then second of all, um, we want item dot income less than eighteen. Mm -hmm. um, further help needed there. So, so I have a statistic. Yeah. Sorry, there was. Um, I, sh I should have uh, made this clearer. I apologize. There's also under the analysis tab a thing called statistics, which can be used to, to perform statistic, statistical calculations as well. I'm just doing these in the population right now. Okay. Um, so, so this last one. Who could tell me from the job tutorial yesterday? What does this mean? What does this thing? It means that the person is a female. What is this thing? It's and, logical and, and their income is less than 18. So that will count up the number of women in poverty. Okay? Um, now, ampersand, ampersand? Um, sorry, I, I, yeah, um, I, I should really um, get back in the habit of, of showing this, um, probably a magnifier. Um, I, I, whoa, 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 whoa. um, uh, okay, great. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's just see if I can scroll down there. There it is. See that? Okay. We're going to have to work with the, 
the vagaries of screen real estate here. Okay. Uh, so now, ladies and gentlemen, um, now that we've added that, uh, do, do people want me to stay here longer? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so I had um, count males, count females, and then count poverty. So count in poverty. And then count women in poverty. So l let me just make sure people are solid on this. Um, why, why am I doing this for, for, for males? Why, what is this mysterious thing? What is item? Item is a reference to Yeah, I mean, you can see here if we if we go over this, is this item the embedded object? In other words, okay. here it's, it's the agent that's, that's embedded here in the population. The thing basically it's the same. Item is the name of the thing in the population. How do you know if uh, is, if women is coded by one, one or zero? The purely uh, purely an arbitrary decision we made uh, here. I mean, for particular coding standards, you know, in our administrative data, provincially there's a standard. And but I mean, I'm saying you weren't sure how would you check to see which was associated. Where did we, where did we delineate women and women? We, there was no comment to that effect now. I decided in my mind. Oh, you just randomly. I, 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 I chose it, and that's because the coding we use in our bio statistics works. You know, okay. we have one zero. And I'm sorry, men, men is zero and one is one. Um, it's, it's, it's arbitrary, but I think that's a convention that's that's used by other researchers too, um, or one and two, you know, um, or for other types of of, um, of coding. But um, but uh, this being a sort of toy model, it's 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 a quite arbitrary decision. Um, okay, so um, oops, uh, do 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 do. Um, so um, I want to suppress this thing, but um, uh, here we go. Boom. Um, Okay, so uh, let's suppose I want to quit magnifier for the moment. Boom. Um, okay, now let's uh, let's run this thing. Run simple experiment. Boom. 
Does anyone need TA help? TA? Okay, so run it. Okay, now we don't really see much different here, right? But now click on population. What do you see? What do you see that's different? It provides this, these statistics, right, on the population. Now, right now, those are static. Why are they static? Why aren't they changing? Because there's no, yeah, there's no income dynamics. Um, this is not a panel study of income dynamics. Um, there's no, there's no dynamic, there's no, well, there's no sex changes going on either for that matter. Um, so, so this is, is totally, um, totally static right now. But, but it does summarize this, this count. And lo and behold, if you add these up, you'll find that they sum up to 10,000 total size of the population. Okay, so no, no giant surprises, but it suggests how you can compute some things. Let's now um, go and do something a little bit more interesting, something that's changing. Something, ladies and gentlemen, um, Wintrill, maybe you should close the doors. We're going to stretch. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> Lock them up. Um, no, no. Well, okay. That's, that, that is great. <laughs> Thanks. Um, okay. We're, we're going to stretch you a little bit now. Um, okay. So uh, click on person. We're going to go add a statistic. Okay. Um, uh, okay. And we're going to do count infective. Um, first of all, did anyone did anyone want to ask questions about these statistics that we've just seen? Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So one thing you could do is you could do um, this. Um, right. Yeah. If, if you wanted to get a simple proportion, you could do um, here. I'll add a statistic that will do that. Okay. Um, Right, and we'll explain it. So, uh, pardon me um, while I take a, a, a student responsiveness. Um, I, I focus on this for a second. So, fraction, um, uh, fraction male, say something like that. Right. Um, okay. So, I'm going to do an average of this expression. Um, Right. Um, uh, so, so I'm going to do an average of the expression uh, one L zero. Okay. Um, mm, mm, mm. Oh man. Um, teaches me a good lesson. Um, okay. One, one point zero zero point zero. Just to make this clear, it actually. Yeah, but the spaces don't matter. Um, okay, they they actually don't matter. Um, it would be perfectly happy with that, but my eyes would not be happy. Um, and and my eyes are more important than its happiness, actually. Um, okay, so what this is saying is, can anyone parse this for me? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. We'll we'll get the magnifier back on. Um, That, what does that mean? Person, if their sex, you know, 
This is actually, oh man, um, yeah, sorry? Well, well, you could, but, but it, not in a statistic. I mean, you, you could in a separate term. It just, uh, it was asked, could I use this in a statistic? So here, essentially, if this is, if this is male, it's going to count as a one, otherwise count as zero, just taking the average of that over the population, and, and that will compute the fraction. Um, for fraction female, um, we could, if I want to be pedantic about it, it would be fraction, fraction female. We could do this calculation externally, of course, outside of this, but if you want to do it in this context, you would do it uh, average, the expression would be this, it would be true, and then if I want to be pedantic, it would be this, um, but um, but I could actually just cast item dot sex the double, and for those who are in the job, short on that, turn it into a double, and take the average over it. Um, did you just say one minus fraction there? Um, well, no, because this is an expression that's evaluated for each person. At so it has to be accumulated in real time. Each person yeah. No. Again, I could do it. I could. I could do it. Have a variable separately in the model that does it. Um, it's just, if I want to do it as a statistic in here, this is kind of how I have to do it, okay? Um, okay, so let's, let's uh, run this thing. So any question about that? So let, let's just run it. Okay, um, here we go. And, and now if we click on person, we get, um, oh, great. <laughs> there it is. Fraction, um, not surprisingly, uh, the, the, the fraction male is, is uh, 0.497, fraction female is that. I mean, it's just that divided by, by 10,000. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Um, but are, is there a question on that before we go to the thing that will stretch you? Okay. Um, okay. So um, what we want to do is, is get this down here. Um, boom. Um, okay. Okay. So, so now, folks, we're going to count the number of infectives. Okay. Count infectives. How are we going to do that? How could we tell? Let me ask this. If we had a reference to a person, how could we tell if they were infected or not? How do? Well, what we need to know. What we need to ask the person to know whether they're infected. So, um, here we have a reference to a person. How do we tell what state they're in? We have to know what their state chart is called, right? This is, what is it? It's called state chart? Is that what it's called? Okay. Called state chart dot is state active. You can see why this is your friend. Um, item is the reference to the person. We get a reference to their state chart. We say, hey, state chart, is this current state, is a certain state active? Now, we actually have to say person.infectious. Okay, that's the name of the state. Okay. Um, so those who are in the Java tutorial will rec may recognize this. This is what's called a static variable. It's, it's, that's the designation of the state. All people are in different states, but the name of the state, infectious, is the same between them. What, how that's encoded. So person not infectious is sort of the, the name of that, of that state. Term. It's actually a number of that, that particular state in there. So this is saying for each person, it's going to count up the number for which there's uh, this state is active, okay? So again, we have a reference to the person. We get their state chart. We have a reference to state chart. Now we say, hey, state chart, is this certain state active? Which state? It's person not infectious. And, okay, it is active or it's not active. Okay. Okay. So, um, 
That magnifier helps. See if I'm, I'm going to address your question by saying this. The reason it's person dot infectious is because this state is labeled infectious. If this was la if this were labeled infective, that would be person dot infective. Okay. Um, does that make sense? Okay. Okay. Um, so uh, so any questions on that before we run this? TA help needed? TAs? No? Okay. So do, do people want me to leave it up there for longer? Would that be helpful? Okay. Okay. Um, so let's run this thing now. What should we see now that's different from before with the sticks? Actually, the problem is we're going to not, not see them because this is, is too, too small. Oh, you know what we can do? We can do this, uh, the dream of centuries. I don't, there we go. Okay. Okay, so there's cone infective, right? Hmm? Now, unfortunately, we can't, um, can't get it. We could, we could copy this like that um, and paste it in, but that's just a snapshot, right? Um, if, if the model were done execution, that might be useful. But for now, it just kind of summer. It's just counting the number of infected. Now, that's of course already counted by this variable. But the um, the um, uh, this could be used for count susceptible, count recovered, all those good things. Okay. Now, that's great that we um, that we have this um, this way of summarizing it here. But we could do better than that. Can do better than whoa! Oh gosh. Okay. Um, so uh, do, 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 do. let's let's go back to um, to this. Yes. Um, the counts of like by income and by sex, that sort of thing. That's because um, people's sex and uh, uh, income are not changing right now. Sorry. Yeah, they're not dying exactly. There, there's no there's no dynamics associated with the population. It's it's it, do you remember that very first model which we ran, that the one with the the, the growing sort of annulus that ring that grew, grew. Um, I believe it's basically that that exact same model there. So no one's dying. They're all staying there. They just go through susceptible effect recovery. Okay. So but if they were dying, those would immediately change. Yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah. So. Uh, in fact, well, okay, we could add, we could make them die. If, if you want to, you could have a death transition called remove population and they go away and then you'd, you'd see it change. Um, uh, well, um, what the heck. Um, okay, here we're going to go, go to person. Um, I, I'm going to have them die occasionally uh, here. And uh, we have a final state, we'll call it death. Um, and uh, death, and uh, probably should have capitalized that. Um, and we, if we would have this, and maybe we have a, a certain rate of death from this state, which is um, a rate of uh, 0 0.05, so they die on average after 100, 100 time units. Um, and, uh, and then if they, if they die, once they enter the death state, um, this is kind of the Death Star. Um, uh, <laughs> okay, glad some of you got that. Uh, the get get main um, dot remove popula remove people. It's called people here, um, and we 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 pass it this. We remove ourselves, um, and oh, sir, sir. Um, 
point zero zero uh, zero five. Um, um, here, here I did it here. So what did I, what did I do here? I'll I'll see if I can. Um, I created this sort of death star, which is a, a final state, and then I created this this link between it, um, and it's a rate of point zero five. The death star once they enter it. Um, uh, this dot get under bar main. Why this is referring, well, this is in person, so this refers to me, and I get a reference to my main class because that takes care of um, the population. Then I do dot remove po people. This is, why is it people instead of population? Why did we have population yesterday, people this time? Mm, it's because in this model, the the um, name of the population is people. So 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 we just have to. It actually automatically, if it if it was called pop, it would be remove pop. If it's if it's just like it's add pop. Um, if it's population, would be remove population. You have to tell the population, hey, remove me. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then we could ask, are they dead? They would still be around. Um, the information about them would still be maintained. We could ask, are they dead? It's just when we count the number of males or females, we'd need to explicitly exclude in the condition. Um, you could count those who are alive and, yeah, exactly. Um, you could do it, you could do it, no question. And in fact, there are good reasons for sometimes keeping people around after they're dead, like if you wanna have the entire cumulative population to compute statistics on later, and um, you know you want to be able to summarize the longitudinal statistics when the model finishes running, for example. You might want to keep people around, um, and um, you could you know go back and retrospect on people's family histories. You'd have all their, you'd have their parents and grandparents and great grandparents all in the model at once. Although some of them would no longer be living. Yeah. Does that make sense? But you could do it. You just have to be very careful. Um, it's it's easier to make mistakes that way by leaving out that condition. Are they alive? And so you could get the zombie phenomena that we saw yesterday with the zombie deer, right? Yep. Um. You, okay. So that's a good good question. Um. So a final state is distinguished by a couple of things. So, so in short, though, no, you can have it be a final state that they transition to. And um, you could even have the current of the transition itself. This is an action associated with it. When that transition occurs, you could have them destroy themselves and, and so they don't even reach that state. Or you could have that state there and they destroy themselves from coming in. Um, this state is distinguished by the fact that it's no transitions out. If you try to connect a transition out, it would it would not allow you to. Um, because it's a special type of state, it's a sink, as we sometimes call it. In other words, it it doesn't allow transitions out semantically. Um, someone seeing this will know that this is kind of the final final state, which may be helpful for parsing the diagram. But if you had a state called death there, um, um, you know, it would be fairly clear, I think, but like if you see this, um, it kind of hints that, okay, this person is no longer in ex existence then, or, or might well not be in existence. A regular state, they'd really have to read the name and kind of get this. So I like this as ways of communication, that like this is their final state. But could you do it as a regular state? Yeah, you could. Yeah, you just wouldn't picture up any outflows from it. So you could ask, are they in the final state? And actually, another reason, this is important, I think semantically, um, so yesterday we saw in that, uh, in that presentation, we saw something I didn't have time to cover, which is, although I alluded to it, composite state, states that include other states, okay? So if we had a big state around all of these, and then you, you know, might transition to a, a different situation. So, so maybe there's, um, you know, um, a situation where there's only the disease of children, and then after you get to adulthood, you don't have to worry about it anymore, or what have you. Um, uh, for 
that entire state, if you have transitions out of the enclosing state, that would apply to each of these states, but it wouldn't apply to this one. So you would never leave from this state after you've entered it. Um, whereas if you had just a regular state there, even if it had no transitions out explicitly, if there was a transition out of an enclosing state, then they would um, they potentially uh, uh, leave leave this state, and that's not what you meant. Okay. So in other words, this is a special type of state. It's a state you can't get out of. Does that make sense? So if you're removing them, so they disappear after this. But even if they weren't to do that, you if this were a normal state and you had a surrounding state around these which had a transition out of it, that implies a transition that could occur out of any state in here. And if this were just a normal state, it could occur out of that state. And that could be a zombie, that could be the origin of zombie-like behavior, like we saw yesterday. Yeah. yeah I think removed from the population, you can't count them anymore. And so, you, again, you could keep them around as a, um, as a non-living, um, you know, artifact in this model, and you could count them, and you could retrospectively collect, you know, have history information on them, and that's sometimes very useful. It's just that you have to be very careful about the statistics in the population and making sure that you don't get the, the sort of situation where you inadvertently have them um, undertaking aging actions and, or, you know, getting married and, um, you know, or, and so on. I mean, because there may be other state charts over here that are, that are pro continuing on their processing. And if you have this final state here, you want to make sure those go to their final state too, or else you can get this kind of weird, weird situation. Um, Oh yeah, yeah. You you could do that. Um, yeah. So I think that actually would be a nice thing, because um, uh, yeah. I mean, it, it would allow you to quickly check, or you could have a method called is alive or what have you. Um, uh, okay. So um, if we were to do this, now what what would we expect to see in terms of the statistics? Anyone tell me? Yeah, they're, they're gonna they're gonna change. Um, so um, none are changing yet because no one has died. But if, if we speed this up now, count of males and count, count of females are, are evolving there. Right? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, so um, we have a student who's uh, done this quite extensively. Um, and uh, he has an analog-based model. And he's computed. So to the best of my knowledge, I, I actually haven't looked for this version of any logic. Um, but to the best of my knowledge, there's no built-in support for those. But you could certainly write them quite quite readily. Um, and um, you know, uh, basically, they're, they're well-defined algorithms. 
this isn't all in Java. You can connect to probably hundreds of thousands, maybe more than that, of, of libraries worldwide for all sorts of different things that support Java as, as a kind of the, their uh, programming language or the Java virtual machine. And um, he connected to a common graph library. So it's a graph library out of a university in Indiana. Um, and that computes between the centrality. And basically, what we need to do is um, I use this mysterious term, we create a wrapper class that sort of encapsulates objects in any logic and basically it, it, it can answer the needs like is this person connected with that person? And yeah, then you just pass it in, you can pass it into that sort of library and it can compute these statistics on it using their code so you don't have to write it yourself. And it's all doing behind the scenes, it's technically any logic graph computation and stuff like that. So you can do things like that. That spares you having to to recreate the code, or worse, recreate the bugs, you know. Um, uh, and so you can you can just make use of third party libraries. And there's a lot of opportunities for doing that with uh, with any logic. I did a similar thing one time. So time was, um, uh, and and the graybeards in the room will remember this, um, where. Um, uh, any logic had limited support for graph for displaying networks and stuff like that. Um, it it really wasn't where it's at now in terms of visualization. And so we actually used third-party visualization libraries um, to display our um, to display our, our contact networks and so on. This was actually for uh, HIV um, and uh, IDU, our intravenous drug use population in Papua New Guinea. You know, so we had graphs uh, displayed there. We were looking at dual networks, networks for transmission of ideas and attitudes, and networks for transmission of the actual infection, which are needle shine networks. Um, and, um, you know, we had external third-party libraries for visualization, and that also works really well. We use the Java, Java library, the Java um, graph library. Okay? So, so great question, Sarah. So what we just did here, folks, was... Um, to um